come up here, Ashley and Stark and, and Chris. Yes, you can come on up here. And crook number, crook number two, he can come up here. He is currently portraying Barney today, but he was crook number two in the... Uh, go ahead and sit down there. Uh, uh, Bar uh, come on, Barney, you can sit down up here, too. I'm just going to stand up because I'm going to help ask you and, uh, do the question yourself. All right, folks, well, we're really glad to have you here with us today. Uh, have you, uh, have anybody got any questions about the movie? We've got several stories we can tell. Has anybody got a question? All right, we're over here. What's going on? Where will you be filming the series? So where will we be filming the series? Do you want to answer that? Oh, okay. We will be filming in Indiana, North Carolina, and Los Angeles. Again, the same locations that we used last time. Yeah. I know, we're really excited. Yeah. We're probably even filming more in, in Indiana this time um, because they have this new uh, rebate that they're offering filmmakers. If you make a movie in Indiana, uh, any dollars you spend in Indiana, uh, you get about 30% rebate back. So it benefits us to shoot here as much as possible. Yeah. So we're looking for, I, I have an apartment complex in the, in the series. The exterior is going to be shot in L.A. because it has to look kind of L.A., but the interior of the car apartment complex, we're looking for an apartment complex to double for that. You got one? I don't oh. have that, but I will say um, I'm from Newcastle, which is about 45 miles east of here, and they have Mayberry Fest every year. Oh, do they? And Newcastle pretty much is Mayberry Fest. Uh -huh. They used to have used Mayberry to Fest. So she's from Newcastle, Indiana. They That's where Mayberry in the Midwest originated. But they stopped so, having it, and then Steve it moved. Alford. Steve Alford. Steve Alford. Yeah, he's from there. So yeah, so they—that's where we started doing Mayberry in the Midwest. I don't even know what year it was. It was a long time ago. But uh, we did it there, and then they stopped doing it, and then they picked it up in Danville, and now Danville has kind of stopped doing it as well. So we're looking for a new home for Mayberry in the Midwest. Uh, that's kind of what Mayberry Fest is based on. That and Mayberry Day is kind of a comp uh, compilation of. Yeah. Uh, compilation. So, a compilation. Thank you for the right word. I didn't introduce everybody. So, this is, we got Stark Howell over here. He's our director and writer of Mayberry Man. We got Ashley Elaine. She's Kate, obviously, in the movie. If you don't figure that out, you got a really bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is, uh, this is Terry Barbell. His real claim to frame is Brett, the lead actor, is his nephew. But, uh, it, you know, all the looks came from Terry, I think. I'm not sure. But he no, was... a family resemblance. So in the movie, he was crook number two. So you saw that. He was uh, still in that car that was orange. It had a one on it that I have no idea what car that really was. Yeah. Because that would be a trademark problem. <laughs> but uh, they were still in the car. So he was the uh, main guy out there still in the car. And he, we was, got, he was the brains of the operation. <laughs> he was the brains. Because I was the oldest. Exactly. You're the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Chris Bowman. Uh, he was Gomer in our movie. He did a great job, too. And, uh, and I'm, I'm Alan. I played uh, Floyd in the movie, the tribute artist, who was played by a guy named Alan. Was, that was a stretch for me. I still don't know my last name yet. I, I was Alan in the movie. Uh, and uh, what a great experience it was. So, all right, any other questions? You got another question? Okay, so we had this question before. The question is, was Opie CG'd into the movie? The little boy that was Opie that was with Greg Shell? Uh, there were some other, some someone else had asked that question previously. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it looked a lot like us. First of all, we didn't have the money for CG, so that <laughs> kind of cut that out. No, he's actually a local. Um, do you know? Angela Canope. Do you know where she lives? It's west of Danville uh, somewhere? West, it's in Sa or New Salem or Salem. pretty local. And yeah. she said she had two kids. North she had Salem. three kids. North, North, North Salem. Salem. North Salem. She had three kids, and Out one west. of them looks a lot like Opie, and you know. Yeah. Uh, I should say the. Terry Varvel connection with Brett Varvel, we were um, maybe three or four weeks from shooting and then we a COVID hit and then 
Screen Actors Guild came up with all of these uh, protocols that you had to have if you were going to shoot a movie. And our budget wouldn't handle all of what we had to do. So we had to do it. We had to go non-union. Well, when we went non-union, we lost our lead actor uh, and most of our um, legacy, like the older people that were in the Andy Griffith show, they were, they were all scheduled to be in the movie and no one felt comfortable flying. So here we are three weeks without a lead actor. And Terry says, well, I have a, I have a nephew that's an actor. I know a guy. And I'm, guy. I'm thinking this, <laughs> he can't be very good. Or I would have, he would probably would have said something. Oh, gosh. And so I went to uh, his, uh, I, I guess, I don't remember what I saw, maybe YouTube clips of him. And I, I said, he looks kind of like he could be a Chris Stone. And then I saw him acting. It's like, you know, he's a pretty good actor. And he came in and just nailed it better than the original guy we had cast. Yeah. And he was like under our noses and Terry didn't say a word about it. But you got to search yourself a little more. I guess so. Um, no, when I, I announced to the other tributes uh, that, Brett was going to be in it. They were going to be the main actor. Christy McClendon, who plays the fun girls in the movie, she responded with hubba hubba. With the, <laughs> I posted a picture of him. She said hubba hubba, and then she said, well, we know who got all the looks in the family. So <laughs> I said I, I'm hurt by that. I was very hurt. Uh, we got a question way up there. Okay, so the question was, where was the, where was Chris Stone's house that we filmed with all the tropical plants and everything outside? Where was that? So I should let Allie ask, ask answer that question, but that's on North Meridian Street. It's the old governor's mansion. But we had a greens company come in and plant, put all of the, they didn't plant them, but they were all in pots. We, we had to make it look like Southern California. And so we had them bring in anything that looked like it would be from that. And it, and it actually looks like it, should, it could be Beverly Hills. The, the, the buildings look relatively the same. It's the, um, the foliage that we had to make look like California. And then the interior is the what mansion? is Perry Mansion. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I wasn't. But actually, actually Allie also found that for us. And that is a beautiful um, piece of architecture on the inside. And, and then the lady that lived there happens to be a interior designer. So she had it designed. I mean, I didn't have to, we had no prop department, so it wasn't gonna happen anyway. So we were very fortunate to have a house that was fully furnished with some of the best pieces of art. I don't even, I mean, they're original pieces. And it, I couldn't have done better if I had called a set decorator and said, Dec decorate my set, so. Hats off to Allie for that. And, and you and could you tell it was two different houses? In other words, uh, I, if I if I didn't know, I forget sometimes when I'm watching the movie. Oh yeah, that's two different. They're not even the same house. The interior and the exterior are separate. One so, question I get asked a lot is, "So, what did you think this time you saw it?" I actually haven't seen my own movie in eleven months because um, I saw it about a hundred times beforehand and. And I did see some things that I hadn't seen. One thing I saw, where's Jeff Barry? I saw Jeff hiding behind a car. Uh, do you know that scene I'm talking about? Yeah, at the beginning. No, when they are walking and talking in that long shot. And you can see wait, right down the street. And she says, I'm sorry, I guess Mayberry Fest is kind of a big deal around here. You're, I can see you hunched in the back window, you know, through the back window of a car. And I never saw that before, so. The next time you watch it on the small screen, uh, it's wow. that law. It's that big wide shot where they're walking in the in the old cars in there, and they're coming down the sidewalk. And way in the background, there's Jeff going. Are they shooting yet? I've never seen that. I know. I'm pretty sure that was you at the end of that street, right? Tra doing traffic control. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. All right. So we have another question right here. What you got? Um, I actually live above the garage at the house on Meridian Street. Oh, you do. That's uh, right. I, when you guys were all there filming, it was so much fun, and everyone was so nice. The fun girls were really nice. <laughs> 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 I've, got, I've got a nice picture of a big red 
mint mark on my face. Right? I bet. And that was during COVID even. Yeah. That's how, I mean, yeah. that's how bold they were. It was just really fun and everybody was so accommodating and it just, you know, it's exciting to see something like that in life your own place. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask Stark, I noticed your name was on some of the credits for the songwriting. Is that yeah, you do a lot? no, but I have very uh, talented friends. So one of my best friends, well, my probably my best friend, he's a songwriter and a musician. And I said, we need to, I need to come up with songs because we don't have the budget to hire someone to do it. So I said, how about you and me? We'll write some songs. And it's about 80% him and me, you know, giving me my feedback. And I am actually... Uh, singing back up, background vocals on several cuts. I mean, it's pretty much, I had another friend who was a composer who has his own studio. We just went in, the three of us went in there and we just created all the music except for Baraka Valley, of course. Um, so yeah, it's like, you want to sing harmony on this? Like, okay, as long as you bury me in there somewhere. So so you're like oats of pollen oats. I'm not you're, even oats. He's, he's oats. I'm like, no, I'm not even the oats. I'm, but, but yeah, we had to... Uh, come up with all the different things. And I would call Baraka Valley every once in a while and say, you know, we need a car, a really annoying banjo for the inside of Doug's car. Can you whip something up for us? They turn it around and, you know. Now everybody gets the uh, publishing or the, the songwriting royalty credits, which they're probably peanuts. But um, yeah, that we just kind of had to do it all. Um, there's, just, And I think we'll end up doing it all again because I'm sure our budget's not going to, you know, be big enough to, to hire an orchestra, but, uh, yeah, Mayberryman.com. Help us out. That's right. That was a key right there. Uh, so uh, we got any other questions right there. So the question is what kind of places are we looking for to film in Indianapolis? The script's about 85% done. So uh, I, I don't know every place, but I know that we're looking for like a auto parts store. Um, we're looking for an apartment. We're looking for a restaurant, which I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna use right next to the Royal Theater. They have that outdoor cafe area. Uh, we have a we have a shot there. Um, we're gonna shoot kind of in and around the square, or whatever we can use in there. Uh, what else do we have? Can you think, Court? You know, the theater, obviously, interior of the theater, exterior of the theater, uh, the streets, the storefronts. The apartment, the apartment complex is the, the carpet complex. Oh, um, the, we have a something called the Mayberry Township that we need an interior for. So we're, we have to find that. If it were, if we had more time and more money, we'd probably we'd like to do that in the soundstage and just build the set, kind of like the old Andy Griffith show. But we don't have the time nor the money to do that. Um, the township is where I'm not going. I don't want to give too much of the story away. But uh, Alan, he's he kind of heads the Mayberry Township. That's his day job. So I just let you in on a little secret. Um, and it's sort of emotion. I'm sort of All trying right. to replicate the courthouse environment. So you had Andy sitting at the desk and you got Barney kind of in his chair. I'm kind of recreating that a little bit with having Floyd run the township. So he's behind the desk and Barney, I'm not going to tell you what his job is, but he'll be hanging out there. And so that's kind of a, a reoccurring location. Um, I want to find something that has the doorway on the right, just so it feels like the courthouse. You know, I want windows on the corner and I, whether we can find the exact thing, I don't know, but um, that's the idea for that. So that would be shot here. There's a lot of scenes there. Um, yeah, cool. I can't think of any more right now. She's had a question for a long time up there. What, what you got up there? So oh, what platform is the series going to be streaming questions. on and how many roles for children are there? Is what she wanted to know. Well, I've heard a couple of, a lot of times that we need to get like kids in it, yeah. you know, because the first one, I mean, we really basically just did local auditions. We didn't have a lot of time to think beyond our immediate needs. So 
Um, but one of the comments was that, yeah, we need to kind of like fill out the spectrum of, of age ranges. Uh, so we're, we're, once I get the script finished, then I'm going to plug in a lot of, it's kind of like you got, you have the main guys, you have the main story happening, and then you have to fill in the world. So at the filling in the world stage, we'll reach out and try to add people. So and screen test tomorrow. We do have screen test tomorrow. I mean, if you wanted to, you can tell them about that. I'm tired of talking. Okay. Oh, hi. Um, we have screen tests, or we don't like to call it auditions, but screen tests tomorrow at the Royal Theater from 10 to 12. And you'll be reading. I might read with you. Alan might read with you. And you just never know. We might see I mean, something in someone. If, anything for fun. You can yeah. do it for fun. For fun or It'll be if video you really want to be in it. And I'll see it. Uh, there's no absolute no guarantee that there's a you know that anyone's going to get hired. Yeah. Um, but um, if you feel fun. inclined, it will give you some some dialogue to read, and you can go up there and and it'll be inside the Royal Theater. You can go mm -hmm. in there, and it won't be outside where a hundred people are looking yeah, at you. You can just go in private. there and do your thing, and you know be out of it. But that's something. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't like microphones. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah. We got another question over here. Okay. So what, what have we got? Well, I saw in the credits that uh, Ron Howard's brother, Clint, was in the film. Uh, what was his character? So, so the question was, Clint uh, was in the credits. Clint it was in the credits for a thank you because he did a lot of promotion for us. He was one of the casualties of the, um, the pandemic because when we went non-union, he's a union actor and he can't work non-union. So we lost out on him. And he had a little, you know, as most of them did, they were very skeptical of traveling at that point. So we, we kind of lost him. And because the second, the sequels a, is non-union as well, uh, he'll just have to, you know, help us behind the scenes. But, what I was wondering, what was uh, Floyd the Barber's last name? What was Floyd the Barber's last name? It's Lawson. Floyd Lawson. Yeah. L-E-W-S-O-E Floyd Lawson. Yeah. Yeah, proprietor of a two chair shop. Too. Yeah. I, I got yeah. I have a question for him. I want to know do you live above the garage? Do the people that live in the house know that you live in the <laughs> place above the garage? Okay. He said no. They don't. Yeah, that's, yeah. No. <laughs> that's a good question, though. Yeah, I, I like that one. What you got? So the so the question for the folks online here it was basically the based on some of the things been going on in the entertainment industry in the last few years is the kind of entertainment that Mayberry Man and Mayberry Man the series presents is that being more receptive or having more uh, interest from Hollywood. I don't know, but I would probably say no, because Hollywood does what Hollywood wants to do. But if something comes out that's successful like this, so if Mayberry Man, the movie, uh, we, we've signed a deal with a distributor. So we were self-distributing distributing, uh, in the beginning, and then we signed with the distributor, and now we're kind of in the limbo stage. So they haven't actually pitched it to platforms yet, but I'm hoping that if Mayberry Man the movie gets on platforms, I mean all platforms, um, it's on Amazon Prime now, uh, but it'll probably be, be pulled down once they start to shop it around. Um, if that got some foothold with an audience and then the series comes out and had some momentum I think Hollywood would turn around because I think there is an audience for it. I think there's a big void of family entertainment. I mean, there's faith that there's faith based, right? But there's just not, you know, general something you can sit down and watch like the old days. And the it's the flyover states that are ignored, right? You got the two coasts that decide everything for everybody. And the, I don't know if the if Hollywood cares enough, even if there was money in it, because it's not cool, it's not hip, and it's not the next thing, and it's not pushing the envelope. I just don't think it's the nature of Hollywood. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean it can't be successful. It just means we don't need how, I mean, there's lots of things happening that without Hollywood money, um, you know, the chosen and other things. So we, I hope that we're like, you know, we can turn the corner if, if people like it. Um, but I'm doing it, you know, regardless. Uh, it's just something that I've, I felt the need to do because I want, I like family entertainment. Um, I've been a fan of the show, even though my dad was on the show, I still am a fan of the show. So I made it as a fan. Uh, and I think the, pe the, the, the folks that backed us somehow trusted that I would handle it properly, maybe because of my father being on it, I felt a sense of responsibility or whatever. Um, I'm not sure that, that they would have just given their blessing to anyone. So it was a little bit of pressure to, to, to give people something that I felt like they could be proud of and still honor the show. And I think I was successful in doing it. Plus, I think the series is going to do the same thing. It's just a continue. It's basically the same thing. It's not an episodic series. So it's not like this episode is self-contained like the Andy Griffith Show episodes. It's one long story. And so, you know, because people binge watch you know, series stuff. So it's one long story and it, and it's about the furthering relationship of what happens with Chris and Kate. Um, there's a, I'll just tell you this, there's a crisis in Mayberry that Floyd and Barney have to solve. Um, and then there's a, there's another story with Shane. He's got a whole thing going on because I realized I didn't know that these folks would do such a great job. <laughs> I mean, I, they're, they're, the, the movie is funnier than the script that I wrote. I think they brought so much humor to it and everybody enjoyed it so much. Then now it's easy for me. I go, oh, okay, I get what Shane's about now. Oh, I didn't know Alan could do that. And we just met Chris. And so it's like, okay, I know where the funny is. Now I just write to it. Before I was just kind of writing it and uh, hoping that you got, I, I mean, I asked Alan year, a couple of years earlier, if I, wrote, if I wrote a script, could you play the lead? I need, I need the glue that holds Mayberry together. Could you think you could do that? And he said, I don't think I can. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I mean, I thought he could too, but I, everyone says the same thing about Alan's performance. Wow, he's so natural and so likable. He's the silly oh, putty that holds it all together. Silly putty? That's a good description, too. Yeah. yeah, boy, it could have been really bad, couldn't it? Yeah. It, it could have we, been really bad. We have a question right there. She's been holding her hand up a long time. What, what's your question? Yeah. Oh, so she's asking about the Connor Prairie part. Did we actually film it there? I, I want to answer a little bit of that. Yeah, and it was fun too. That was our night. It was a night shoot, and it was all at night, and uh, like all night, all night for two nights, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, his car. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you tell about your yeah. yeah the the car that's sitting outside here is the car that's in the movie. And it's, it's the it's real, real car. car. So yeah. I had to be there. I was there. Uh, well, I was there the one night that well, shot it there. Well, it is a replica. Yeah. <laughs> You it's really a, just a replica. You want to nip it, Stark? <laughs> it's not really a real car. Yeah. Um, but so I brought my car there. The sun was still up, was going down when I got there. And I had to put position it and everything. And then we didn't shoot that until like 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. And it was very cold. It was very cold. It's great acting by him and Rick and Brett because they were cold. And yet you couldn't tell. It was fine. We had a great time. When I read the script originally, that entire part of the movie where we're going there, as I was reading the script, I was enjoying the script. I got to that part and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like an episode from the actual show of Barney and Andy and Floyd going somewhere. And I was just, uh, I got with Rick Roberts, who plays Barney in the series and in the movie. Uh, we, we talked online and everything. We're like, we can't miss this up. This has to work. Because all of us thought, wow, this is this is so fun. And, and thankfully, the, our director was very kind of letting us do things. And, and uh, we, we didn't do a lot because we didn't have a lot of money. So we're trying to keep everything uh, pretty much by the script. 
but there were a few things that we did, like that whole scene where we go in and it's like we're in there and we're in there and we duck down and then I start doing this. That wasn't actually, that wasn't in the script, but I did it. And then they were like, yeah, do that. Keep doing that. That's good. So there were a lot of fun things that we were able to do uh, with that little adventure. And uh, yeah, that was, that was my favorite part. It was Rick's favorite part. And uh, we're excited. We're, we're looking forward to the series to get to do some more of that kind of stuff because we enjoyed that a lot. So, but it's a really beautiful place. We didn't have to, uh, you know, it was, it was already there. We didn't have to do anything. Now, now the second, you know, all of it's not there. Some of it's over at basically at Shane's house. When you see Shane buying his house, that's the same place where the, uh, where the car was that he was stealing, you know, the, the car, it's the same house. And, uh, and by the way, there's a big cornfield there around that house and Stark I don't know how much time he spent, but he put trees where the cornfield was. So there's trees behind Shane's house and all around it. And it's like, that's not the way it looks when, you, when you're there. You're starting to sound like so. it's the upside down from Stranger Things. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like. But we had a great time. It was uh, that whole scene that was really fun. So other questions? Okay. <laughs> so working backwards from the end product, the final movie, how many hours did the director have to cut out of the end product to get it down to this this point? Well, the original cut was 14 hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the original cut was about what you see because, again, with a small budget, you don't have a lot of extra time to do anything. So. I, my background is as a, as a storyboard artist, so I knew in my head what it needed to look like because I'd already boarded it out in my head, and I did an extensive shot list, and there was no, hey, that was great. Now let's do one just for fun, you know, which happens a lot. We didn't have time to do that. If, it, if I felt like we had the scene, we moved on because we had a lot of setups each day. There were actually no scenes that ever got cut out. Every scene we shot is in the movie. Um, there were a lot of takes and different things to choose from, but no scene is gone. So, so if you have the script, because some of you may have gotten the script when they did, there was a section that we didn't film that was in there that that was in the actual script. So you can go through it and try to figure out where it is. Which one's that? I don't remember. I don't remember <laughs> what the scene was. I just remember you said, oh, we're running we're running short. We can't do it. Or, or the time was running out. The second part of the squad car driver. Yeah, it may have been. I can't remember. There was, there was a portion we had to cut out, and I don't remember of the whole – it was in the whole script. I don't remember what part it was. There was one scene we almost didn't shoot because I didn't think about it. I mean, it was just – we overlooked it, and then – Alan's like, hey, wait a minute, we're about ready to pack it up. And wait, wait a minute, we didn't do the note reading. And if that would have been a disaster if we hadn't, if it hadn't been for Alan, we didn't really have a, a, a true script supervisor, which is the one person that's supposed to make sure we shoot everything. So it would have just fallen through the cracks. I would have gotten home and gone, this story makes no sense. <laughs> and because I didn't have any other scenes, I mean, it would have, I mean, there's a lot of reasons that it could have just fallen off the cliff. So but just as a, a little a little it. trivia for you guys, too, that scene, uh, because Alan didn't want to have to remember the lines. I wrote that. Uh, the, the note I'm reading is is my, I wrote it and wrote signed Chris Stone at the end. I mean, it's uh, and I put it on the car. That's why Alan remembered, hey, we didn't shoot this. Yeah, uh, yeah. No wonder it was so, etched in your run. Because I had uh, done that. So. Right. Okay, you have a question. Which scene took the most takes? Probably the first day of shooting. Um, probably the courtroom took the most takes. Yeah. Yeah, I got this. Well, yeah, you know, another thing that took a lot of takes, but it wasn't a big scene. It was when uh, Shane show, shows up with the corn cob and Briscoe, and they're in that thing. That was just a little, there was no dialogue to it. But we had. Two people walk in front of the camera and then Shane's supposed to come around the corner and all the timing had to be right. I think we did like 14 takes on that until wow. we got it right. It's real to one. 
You have a question? I have a question. Sir, you have, this person on the front that I have no idea who he is has a question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question from our... Uh, oh, from the live stream. Okay. Live stream. How long have the actors been acting as their character? How long have the actors... So, How long have the actors been acting as their characters prior to the movie's creation? So, I, I believe my time of commitment was two, maybe three days. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Rick Roberts, who was Barney, I can answer for him. Uh, he does Barney. Uh, he's a com he's a professional comedian, and you can look him up. He's R I K Rick Roberts. You look him up online. But he does Barney sometimes as part of his act, but he doesn't dress up like Barney very often. He's, he'd never really done like a street festival. He's never done those kind of things until after the movie, actually. Uh, so he's he's done Barney like that for quite a while. Terry, how long have you been doing Barney? Uh, Barney character for 20-some years, but full-time as a tribute artist for the last six. six. What about you, Kate? How long have you been? <laughs> Well, well go ahead and tell this. Kate. How many how many acting roles did you have before this? Well, I've done modeling for the majority of my life since That's I was nice. really young. I know I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, um, nip it. <laughs> um, and I've done live television, but this was my first acting movie role. So, yeah, so many years in entertainment, but first acting job. So in the movie, I don't tell, you know, Chris Stone actually asked me, you've been doing this a long time. And I said, oh yeah, a lot of years. Like, that's because I can't do math. And it was 1994 when I started doing Floyd. So it's been that long. So that's 28 years, right? So uh, of course I didn't want to tell in the movie either because it would have dated it <laughs> at that point. But I've been doing Floyd at Mayberry events since 1994. So, uh, but I'd never done anything on a, in a movie or anything like that. So I, I felt like I could do it and uh, do Floyd. And I, I was, I was pretty comfortable actually being Floyd was pretty easy for me. But the uh, night before we actually shot the scenes where I'm Alan in the movie, you know, when we're in California, I was calling my wife going, I don't know how to be me. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Uh, and it was it was honestly, uh, it was kind of uncomfortable because Alan, me, would never show up at some rich guy's house without him knowing I was coming before I got there. Uh, that would have never happened, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot. Of, it was fine. It's, I'm also, glad it worked out. Also, sticking your face in between a kissing scene. <laughs> I would never do that either. That's the next question. Yeah, about the kissing scene? In the series, are we ever going to get to see Are we ever going to get to see Chrissy? Kiss? Uh, Kate, kiss. <laughs> Pretty sure not, but let's see. Yes and no. I can just leave it at that. <laughs> It'll be off camera. You'll just have to assume. Yeah. <laughs> see, I well, actually ask as well, is Floyd married? And because uh, I asked my wife, I said, are you going to be my wife in the series? She said, no. I said, I get a new wife? <laughs> wow. But uh, again, we take, I take bribes. <laughs> She's already said no, so that's good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, I make so much money acting. I don't have any other job. The question was, do you have any other jobs other than acting? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. This is uh, this is a labor of love. I've been doing it for a long time. I have a real job. I've been doing it for thirty-two plus years. He's a barber. Yeah, I'm not a barber. I can cut hair, just I can't guarantee you what it'll look like when I finish. But I'm, a, I'm actually an electrical engineer. This is what I actually am. And uh, I actually work IT things now. Uh, so it's, but I've been doing that for 30 some odd years. I, I was somewhere just recently as Barney and somebody told me, they said, boy, this is a great part-time job you have here. I said, no, it's a hobby because hobbies are expensive. <laughs> And what about you? Oh, I'm studying to be a shepherd. <laughs> That's a good career. Well, I, was That's gonna, a, I was gonna retire. It's busy, busy, busy. Time of season, you know. Shepherd cat. It's, it's hard to retire from not doing anything. But, well, I, I I retired from a, a big city type job, and uh, a couple of years ago, and now I just an actor and an artist and that's what i do for a living congratulations that's good what about you um 
I, this was filmed two years ago. So since then I'm now a working actor. I've been hired for many things and um, also do event production and I'm not doing that. So still model too. That's on the side. Cool. Yeah. So Cool. So as I already said, Rick Roberts, he was Barney. He's a comedian. That's what he does for actual living. And uh, I'm trying to think of the other. Brett, actually, he acts and directs, and he actually makes movies. He makes Christian films. And he's uh, he's very good. They're very good. Uh, uh, name, what's the name of the one that you were in with him, the last, the, the big one? The War Within. The War Within. It's, uh, it's really good. Yeah. Um, Is it about a war within? Yeah. Within somebody's soul. So it's a Christian film. But... Um, um, in the Mayberry Man, the mayor that gives him the key to the city, that's his father, my brother. And um, he, Gary didn't have that role until the night before because they didn't have one. And the day we were going to shoot. I think Court came over to me and said, hey, how about using Gary Barbell as the mayor? I'm right. Okay. I, I didn't know. So Sometimes it's just that easy. This is the first time I've noticed, and I, I'm, I'm going to mention it to Gary. But as I'm watching it, this is much bigger than some of the screens we've seen. But um, when he gets up there and says, Chris Stone as mayor of this, when he says that, that goofy southern accent that he's trying to do, if you look at Rick Roberts over here in the corner, he just kind of goes, <laughs> <laughs> kind of smirks like, what is that? It's, it's my honor. <laughs> it's my it's honor. It's like Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> yeah, he sounds like he's from South Alabama. <laughs> I had to work real hard on my southern accent. Does it sound pretty good? Is your no? Uh, well, I'm from Alabama, so it's uh, only when you say Danville. Danville. Well, see, actually, to me, uh, saying Danville would be Southern would say Danville, in my opinion. That would be Danville because you go to Huntsville, Huntsville, Alabama, instead of Huntsville the Theater. Yeah, Theater. Yeah, Danville sounds Southern. You do. We do say Huntsville, uh, but uh, we don't say Huntsville. Y'all were very clear that it was Dan Veal. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the other questions. Who was the original Chris Stone? Who was the original Chris Stone? He was actually um, Laura, Earl Hagen's widow, Laura Hagen. Do you familiar with the Earl Hagen? He wrote all the music for the original. Song. Her, his widow is Laura Hagen, and it was actually his son. Um, and he would have done a fine job, but mm -hmm. after looking at what Brett did. It wouldn't have been this good. He's a, he would have been a different, a little bit different type. He's not he's not a likable. I don't think he would have been as likable. And I actually didn't realize that Brett would come with the the humor that he did because I didn't really write the part to for him to be a funny guy. Uh, he everybody else was supposed to be funny, and he's kind of lost in this funny world. But when we shot the um, courtroom scene in the very beginning, that was the first day of shooting, and he started doing all these facial expressions. I was very happy because I thought now we'll like him because he's really kind of a despicable person. Uh, but he's now he's a likable despicable person because he, he just makes you laugh. So that way I don't think we would have had with the first guy. He would have just been a jerk, probably. That's a thing. It's a barbell thing. Barbell. <laughs> that's a, that's a bar barbell thing. Barbell. Bar bar <laughs> okay. Go ahead. How long do you plan on keeping the series going after the initial series? The same reason as how long you keep, plan on keeping your car running, as long as you have money to put gas in it. So uh, we would love to do more. And we actually, we're, we're talking with other contacts, and there's possibility of long term. Uh, you, know, you know, it just takes, takes some deep pockets and the right person that now believes in it. I mean, <laughs> we can't crowdfund for all this forever. Because, I mean, even I think this time around is to me feels like a stretch to ask more of the fans at some point you know we just need you know someone with a lot of money to say i believe in what you're doing and i'll fund it and but for now we're going to do the series and do the is is the best job we can keep the quality the way it is hopefully a little better even because we'll have a little bit higher budget um and maybe that would be you know looked at it by someone that wants to keep it going. Um, does anybody maybe can get lucky once and they might look at it because you, you know, it's, I think people that know could probably pick out why it's low budget and they can probably, there, there's scenes that make me cringe 
that I won't tell you because I don't want you to see them or I don't want you to notice, but I know how, what the effect of a low budget has on it. And I think we can eliminate a lot of that in the series now because we'll have a little bit more of a crew. We were understaffed, everybody was overworked and just, you know, I, I think we got very fortunate because it could have been a lot worse and it came out so good that I, you know, I, I want to make another one. And so hopefully that'll, um, that'll be a good calling card to anybody that believes there's a, um, a lifespan to it. You know? So anybody that knows the person in Illinois who won the mega bucks yesterday, <laughs> uh, send them to talk to these guys, right? Hey folks, we want to thank you for being here. Thank you everybody for joining us online. Thank you to all of our panel members and I hope you'll get out there and support Mayberry Man, the series. And thank you so much for everything you do. Thanks everybody. Mayberry Man the movie was such a great success that now there's going to be Mayberry Man the series. Please join me in supporting this wonderful adventure and journey into more Mayberry. More Mayberry for everybody. Hi, I'm Stark Howell. And I'm Court Howell. Welcome to our Indiegogo campaign for Mayberry Man the series. Our father, Hoke Howell, was a perennial character actor who appeared in hundreds of TV shows and movies over his 40-year career. One of his most recognizable roles was that of Dud Wash in two episodes of The Andy Griffith Show. Well, you let him just try. Boy, I'll show him a couple of things I learned in the Army in guerrilla warfare. First, you take your hair and you yank his out of it, and you take your hand and yank on it. Stop that, boy. You want your face to freeze that away. <laughs> And we hope that by the end of this video, you'll want to partner with us and together we can make a family friendly streaming series that we can all be proud of. And we're not starting from scratch. We've already made a feature film, Mayberry Man, a story about a big Hollywood movie star who gets arrested for speeding in a small town and gets sentenced to spend a week at Mayberry Fest, a festival celebrating the Andy Griffith Show. It was successfully crowdfunded in 2020 and released in 2021 in select theaters and on Amazon Prime. And we recently signed a global distribution deal to reach new audiences around the world. And we're super excited to now be creating a streaming series that picks up where the movie left off. From the very beginning, we never planned to pitch the movie or the series to Hollywood. That's because we're committed to preserving the wholesome family values found in The Andy Griffith Show and other classic TV shows. And quite frankly, we knew we would lose that control in Hollywood. So we've already started raising funds from private investors. But it will ultimately be up to you, the fans, to provide the balance of our production budget and determine the total number of episodes in season one. We have some amazing experiences and other perks available for you when you back the project, like being a background extra on the show, attend a red carpet premiere, have a speaking role in the series, or even have your business featured as a product placement sponsor. And no matter what perk you choose, you'll have unprecedented behind the scenes access as we make a wonderful series that pays tribute to the television classic we all love, The Andy Griffiths Show. We want to create something that the whole family can watch together, just like the old days of classic television. So we really hope you'll join us, and thanks for watching. Mayberry Man is uh, like a dream come true for Mayberry fans like me. Mayberry Man is not a remake of The Andy Griffith Show. It's a tribute to The Andy Griffith Show and the fans that love the show. It is a way of bringing that Mayberry spirit back to life in a contemporary story. You need to do it. It is so much fun and it is a great thing to get involved in. As a fan, it's probably one of the most exciting things that could ever happen. I was thinking about my dad and how much he would like this or what he would think of all of this. And I think he would be blown away. Let's get this thing made. This can be really good. And it's going to need a group effort. And, you know, if we can put the effort in there, we're going to end up with a really good product. So I, I guarantee this, if you love the Andy Griffith Show, you're gonna love Mayberry Man.